Now, Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki has condemned the attack on the Oba of Lagos, Oba Rewon Akiolu, the Chancellor of Edo State University, Adiremi Makonjuola, and other guests at the residence of the National Chairman of the All Progressive Congress, Adams Oshomele. He stated this during an interview with reporters on Saturday after he and the other dignitaries escaped an attack by suspected thugs at the residence of his predecessor. Governor Obaseki took exception to the resort to violence noting that it was shameful for such an attack to take place at the residence of the leader of the ruling party in the state and at the national level. He described the attack as unfortunate as an unfortunate incident. Now earlier, Plus TV Africa spoke with Michel Agatise, who is a legal practitioner, and he shared his thoughts on this matter. Well, it's really a very difficult one. And, you know, as I often say with feuds of this nature, it's always important for us to take a step back and look at what the root causes are, one. And secondly, about the failings that we have as a nation and how to solve those failings. Forget about the fact that there is a feud between Governor Basaki and ex-Governor Adam Zoshomole. But isn't it weird and strange that a sitting governor can be attacked so brazenly in broad daylight and the people are not brought to book. When you read what Adam Zoshomole set out about what could have led to this security breach, especially as he said that it was the deputy governor of Godwin Obaseki that brought the thugs, one would realize that these thugs were in the vicinity for a couple of days beforehand. So if thugs are in a vicinity causing havoc for a couple of days and the security apparatus in a place that not only the governor, not only a sitting tier one Oba being the Oba of Lagos, not only an ex-governor and the national chairman of the APC, but also the governor of the central bank was in the same vicinity because he gave the keynote address at Edo State University just the day before. It's a real failing in our security apparatus. So forget about the fact of the feud. It's a real issue as to what is the security makeup of this country. Now, secondly, as to the feud, politicians have feuds all the time. I'm not going to sit here and sit on one side of the fence or the other. But when politicians have feuds in any developed country, and Nigeria should not compare itself with any other third world country, but should look at the aspirations to a developed country. When politicians have feuds, really should it be the case that thugs take over the running of the security in the state? It's, it's shameful. The fact of APC losing out in the next election, I think even Okoroja had said that the, 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 the party might disintegrate even beforehand. It's very possible. I don't know if it will be a necessary, act, necessary result, but it's very possible. And the reason why is this. First and foremost, APC was really a coalition of several parties. And because it's a coalition, by the very nature of coalitions, concessions are important, concessions are necessary to ensure that these bedfellows remain in bed together. That's on the one hand. Now, when you have a national chairman who, whether justified or not, the members of the party, particularly the people that are in government positions are having disputes, long-running disputes, with the national chairman of the party, then it's an ingredient for disintegration, especially if those people who are having disputes with the national chairman are also people that command respect, majority, grassroots support, and grassroots following. Because the question then is, is the party structure enough to survive if these people take their following, take their grassroots support, and decamp? to some other party, maybe the leading opposition party or start another party. Those are questions that they need to ask themselves. Now, on the other side of the spectrum, is a question as to why exactly are these people complaining? We're not APC members, I don't know if you are, but, yeah, I'm sorry, no. <laughs> but the question that we need to also ask is, what exactly is he doing that people are complaining about? about? Is it that he's doing the right things and people are feeling that, okay, now you're encroaching on our toes? Or is it that really he's actually a government unto himself and he has gone the other way? We don't know the answers to those questions. But those are important considerations because then it's a question as to whether you go beyond principle in order to ensure concession or whether you stand for principle in order to ensure that the right thing is done. It appears that there is a form of godfatherism issue. Everyone knows that in Edo State, 
for example, it was on the political capital of Adam Zoshomale that Obaseki was able to get into office. Now, there have been allegations and counter allegations that um, Obaseki is biting the proverbial hand that fed him. Now, as to the nitty gritty, as to the agreements they had and the like, no one can know. On the Oshomole camp, I understand that people have said that they feel that Obaseki has taken the state in a direction that is against the people, that is not staying with the blueprint that he had set out, and that he is basically running the state aground. And as a normal citizen who can speak up, that is what he is doing. Now, on the other hand, people are saying that Obaseki is being tried to be controlled by Oshomole, and Oshomole is trying to, you know, Obaseki is trying to ensure sure that you know economic policies and all that improve the state are implemented but cannot because there's the hand behind him well meanwhile the national chairman of the ruling all progressives congress adams oshomale has accused the ado deputy governor philip shaibu of mobilizing over 200 okada riders and thugs to the venue of the convocation of Edo university yamo to embarrass him and his guests he said the whole essence of the attack on him was to create an impression that he was no longer popular at home. The former Edo governor expressed regret that his invited guests, including the Oba of Lagos, Riwan Akiolu, and the chancellor of the university, Aderemi Makonjuola, were caught in the web of the attack instigated by the deputy governor. At a news briefing on Sunday in his Abuja residence, the chairman urged Governor Godwin Obaseki to caution his deputy, whom he accused of having uh, high propensity for violence. As on rating himself of any blame, he said the youth at the entrance of his residence on Saturday only mobilized themselves to save him from further attack from the thugs imported by the deputy governor.